Good morning and welcome to my hobby bench for another video. Did you know that many if not most of all, not all videos are judged by their title and or their thumbnail? So based on how I title this engine or the, based on how I title this video might determine how many views it gets. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to title it but instead of a tidbits video I was considering just saying engine talk and maybe that'll get somebody interested in listening to it but if you're not interested in listening to me talk and show you my engines that's fine too so one of the things I have to say is that Oshkosh or the EAA AirVenture 2025 is in full swing it started yesterday no today's Wednesday so it started Monday our plane started arriving mid last week but the mass arrivals were Saturday and Sunday for general aviation aircraft so if you hear talking in the background, it's because I've got the live feeds going on my computer and on my monitor so I can at least keep an eye on what's going on. Um, the proximity of my apartment is one mile due east or due west of Whitman Field where this takes place. So I have a front row seat to a lot of things and I'm hearing everything that happens there. Yesterday morning on my morning walk, I was greeted by a squadron consisting of three flights of 15 P-51 Mustangs flying overhead or taking off. It was quite spectacular. So the sights and sounds, and I haven't even been there yet, I'm going tomorrow. Tomorrow's my day to go to EAA or Air Venture. They've had two Goodyear blimps, all kinds of cool stuff. So anyway, if you hear anything in the background, that's what you're hearing. So I'm going to talk about the latest uh, recent engine acquisitions and throw it to the table and show you what I've got here and just do a little general chit chat about that in preface in in advance of the live Q&A that's taking place this Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time so if you're interested in chit chatting with me now I don't think it's going to be like live streaming where we see each other I think what is going to happen is it's like a chat box I believe I've never done it but I believe that you're just typing questions and comments and stuff in a chat box and that's how I'll be responding I believe but I'm not entirely sure so it'll be a new thing for me maybe not for many of you but it'll definitely be new for me so let me throw this to the table and I'll show you the engines that I want to talk about a little bit today so let's get right to it okay so you guys know by now that I am a huge huge <laughs> proponent of Facebook marketplace purchases and I've made oh gosh at least 11 in the last year and a half or so now I got two engines shown here only one of them is a Facebook marketplace deal so I'm gonna take one of them away and we'll talk about that one um, last I guess this in my hand here is a OS 40 SF ABN style engine now this I got last night and it was part of a Facebook marketplace deal where I actually purchased a the deal consisted of this a Midwest Aerostar 40 airplane that was completely built covered it had some repairs in the covering so it looked like it had been flown but I'm not sure if this was the original engine on it and I'll explain that here in a moment but along with that engine or along with that airplane came the original box that it was you know the bo the kit box inside that kit box was some pretty cool stuff <laughs> I think it was cool because one of the things that was really interesting was that there was a lot of covering left over in there there was several partial rolls of red and white monocoat and then there was a, f a full roll unopened of top flight red monocoat and by the the outer packaging of the covering, I could tell that that particular roll of Monocoat was extremely old. And I mean, the advertising, the way it was packaged, it was old. And I'm talking like pre-1990 old. Uh, top Flight Monocoat's been around for a while, and this was an old, old roll. Whether it's still good or not, I don't know. But the key thing that I really wanted was this. I don't really, I didn't really care for the airplane. I don't want the airplane. I'm not in a flying position at this time. But when I saw that it said an OS Max engine, I was asking a guy, you know, and so initially when I saw this on Facebook Marketplace, this deal, this package was listed at $100. When it dropped to 50 is when I started 
e or texting this fellow asking questions. And then, and I had told him like the night before last, I said, look, I'm coming to get this tomorrow. And when I sent him that, it, the price was $50. And I woke up in the morning and I saw that he had updated the listing and now it was $25. So I got all of the things I just described to you for $25 plus a brand new Tower Hobbies electric starter, which of course I need like I need another hole in the head. I've got half a dozen starters now, but he was giving it away, so I was going to take it. So anyway, this 40SF was locked up solid, and this is the prop that was on it. It had a, a spinner, but I didn't, you know, I've took, taken that off. This thing was locked up solid. It's totally solid. Carb, everything. You couldn't move it at all, even with a prop on there. So I brought it home and was like, well, the outside looks so nice that it's like this has got to be a very low time engine so i did my thing to it i started heating it and oiling it. and the first thing i did was i took it off the plane i dumped it upside down and it had some kind of liquid in it. it didn't have a plug in it and it smelled like maybe somebody had just poured kerosene in it or something so like i said that plane looked like it had flown quite a bit before but this engine looks like it was run one time and then just never started again and that's how pristine this thing looks and I don't know if I'm going to do a look inside or not. Um, the other thing I want to say about that Midwest Aerostar was the other thing that was very interesting about it was that the Fataba servos, there was only Fataba servos and a fuel tank, no receiver or anything. I think there's a switch. But the Fataba servos in there were, and I don't remember the letter designation, but they were the old style. They had the three exposed pins, you know, the ones that are like really delicate and fragile that come with the gold systems. I don't remember if those are the G connectors or H or whatever they were, but it came with those. And I'm like, wow, that was a really old system that was in there. I don't know. And that those systems dated back to the 80s. I don't know how old the Midwest Aerostar 40 was. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, did all of this stuff get put together at one time? Because this engine is so pristine looking that it was just unbelievable. So this carb barrel was really rusted up not rusted it carboned up and it was so tight and this thing wouldn't even turn over and i've got it turning over to a point now i don't have a plug in here and it still doesn't feel super smooth and i heated this up quite a bit last night so this is probably one of those things where i don't know if i'm just going to go ahead and put it on the stand and run it and get it you know fuel and oil really lubricating through the engine and run it first or if i'm just going to disassemble it and put a new set of uh, Boca bearings in it because I do have Boca bearings for this engine, I believe, on hand. If not, I can get some rather quickly. So this was the first engine I wanted to talk about. Now these engines date back to 1987. That's when the F40 and 46 SF came out. And I've got a 40 ringed engine, fairly new, I won't say new, a, a lightly used, it was new when I bought it, in box in my closet. So, you know, I don't really need this one. So I don't know, those of you that are interested, maybe this one will be up for sale. So the next engine I want to talk about is this. This is a little Sato FA30S engine. Now these came out in 2000, the year 2000. Now this was, this I got this from a really good friend of mine, Jeremy, and it just so happened that, as far as I know, the story is that Jeremy told me is a guy at the field gave him a pair of these and each of them had had this three-bladed spinner came with this three-bladed prop and when i saw the three-bladed prop i was like oh i've been playing with three-bladed props i'd like to have something with the three-bladed prop and i believe that this is a tornado 10-6 and how healthy the prop is i don't know it'd probably be all right but anyway so i asked him if he would part with this because he was just going to put these on eBay and sell them and I was like hey can you cut me a deal and give me a decent price on this thing and he's like well what do you think it's worth so I told him and I got it and then of course I'll just go back and say that anytime you can get a four stroke engine for under a hundred dollars buy it so that's what I did so this engine came to me it was a little dirty it looked like maybe it had been mounted in a plane a, a twin a twin engine plane, both of those engines perhaps. <clears throat> this one was a little dirty, so I was kind of concerned about it in the pictures, but when I, I did yesterday sometime, I did what I call a whore's bath, 
and I just took a toothbrush and some LA's totally awesome cleaner straight and I was just brushing the outside and, and that really cleaned it up in fact this engine looks brand new and I'm going to show you here if I can find the right size here real quick show you how brand new looking this engine might be uh, so this thing looks really new and I was like well I'm going to take a rocker cover off sometimes you can kind of tell the state of an engine by looking inside the rocker cover sometimes you can sometimes you can't but when I took this off and looked in here I mean that looks brand spanking new and if I were to take this off and potentially okay so I don't think you're gonna be able to see that at all but if I do that I can potentially see a small amount of carbon buildup on that exhaust header so it obviously is a run engine I know that but it's very low time and it has been oh, at least six years since I've run one of these on the channel and that wasn't my engine and it's been eight years since I've owned one of these things and now I'm going to tell you some interesting information that you probably didn't know in that before I even started this YouTube channel which was a decade ago I had a Sado FA35S in a little bitty uh, who made it? It was a little Waco Bipe ARF and I don't remember I'll just leave that off. I don't remember the, who made that, but it was just such a perfect little combination. It was really, really fun to fly, and I don't recall what happened to that. I think something happened, and it, I, I put it in. The engine, you know, wasn't damaged at all, but I think I repaired it, and I even took it up and flew it again, but it was one of those things where these modern ARFs are just so built so crappily. I mean, they just use such crappy light super light plywood they're just not built and that was one of the things that really impressed me about that midwest aerostar yesterday i was carrying it out of the truck and i'm like this is a real airplane this is a plane that was made obviously it was built from a kit and those kits had extremely good wood quality compared to the crappy shitty stuff that you're seeing in these arfs that come out now that literally quite literally the light plywood in those ARFs begins to delaminate after one year. So, I mean, those ARFs that are coming out now from about, I don't know, maybe seven, eight years ago onward, the newer style ARFs, and you can tell them right away. I can tell right away by just by looking at the wood and the light ply that that, that crap is going to delaminate, and it doesn't take long at all to do that. So I always kind of figured those last few ARFs I had, even the Phoenix Decathlon, it's like, this is maybe a two or three year plane and that's it because after that it's just going to start literally falling apart because the wood is such garbage in them so i mean if you really want a plane and you see stories and see planes about these guys i've had this plane for 40 years and it still flies well you know why it still flies because it was made with real wood real wood spruce real plywood probably from sig or someplace really balsa usa real real wood not this Vietnamese light ply garbage that they put in these planes nowadays. But anyway, so that was kind of my little discussion about engine talk. And the last engine I want to talk about here, and this one still really kind of pains me a little bit, quite a bit, is I have mounted on my one of my stands this beautiful disaster. This beautiful HP vt49 engine that is just in a state that cannot be repaired and there was a lot of people commenting about how you could find a machinist and pull the sleeve out and all this and that well guess what that isn't happening i don't know a machinist and i'm certainly sure as hell not gonna pay by the time i paid a machinist to do that i could just buy a new case which they sell from mikoa for 186 dollars and i'm sitting here thinking about that but i mean the problem with that is this one here says made in austria i guarantee you that the one i would get from mikoa and it just says case i don't know if it means just the upper or at the lower the whole case and just not the innards or what 
But I pretty much guarantee you the one from Mikoa doesn't say made in Austria. It probably says made in the USA and it may not even look as nice. It may not have the same, I don't know. All I know is anybody wants to see this engine run on my channel, this channel works on donations. And I will ex gladly accept any donations you feel kind enough to offer to allow me to purchase a $186 case from Mikoa and then hope all the rest of the stuff in here is still good enough to be used. Which I'm sure it probably is. The piston didn't look like it was damaged at all. So I'm sure everything else is good. It's just a matter of, you know, the case. But a case for $186? Holy crap. I haven't paid $186 for any, a complete engine in a long time. So that is my engine talk video for today. I don't know if I'm going to do more engine talk videos or not. This has been long and for those of you that have a short attention span, you're probably not listening anymore anyway. So have a wonderful day.